Hey everyone, welcome and thanks for joining our talk about eBPF and Cilium at Sky. For some context, Sky are a player in the OTT video streaming business. So there's three of us who are involved in this presentation today. I will introduce us and then get on with the content because 20 minutes goes by quickly. So first of all, I'm Sebastian Duff or Seb. I'm responsible for the core engineering department and we'll cover a bit more what that is in the introduction. The second person is Anthony Contois, who is a principal engineer who is working on the Cilium adoption at Sky. Anthony has a very deep understanding in the space, so we'll be talking in some more detail about the work which he is doing. And the third person is Joseph Samuel from CECG. CECG are a consultancy who have played a huge role in our strategy and adoption of Cilium at Sky. Joseph has also helped prepare this presentation and is online now to also answer some questions. So this talk might be a bit different rather than going into the te de uh, deep technicals of how we are leveraging eBPF, we'll be focusing on the delivery aspects and how we leverage technology to gain a high level of confidence, mit uh, mitigating risk to the platform and to the business. In the first section of the presentation, I'll give a brief introduction to what we as Core Engineering do, and I will hand over to Anthony to first talk about why we chose Cilium and eBPF and to talk about uh, the pipelining as a form of risk mitigation. So Core Engineering is a department within Global Video Engineering and Apps, which is responsible for the backend services, client libraries, uh, and a portion of the client, clients supporting video and play out for Sky's OTT propositions. Some of the most recognizable platforms and propositions which are part of uh, Sky, that are Sky Go now, which is formerly now TV and Peacock. In Core Engineering, we built a, a multi-tenanted Kubernetes-based platform as a service offering, which hosts about 90% of the OTT application workload. Uh, the platform is built as a white label product so that it can be built once and deployed many times to support the different organizations. As the underlying platform for, um, is for high profile propositions, we have very large complex requirements, including being highly available, hybrid cloud, multi-region and active active, all of this at high scale and low latency. On the next slide, we have some interesting stats which give a brief view of the scale which we're working at. So the multi-tenanted platform currently supports 13 departments with over 90 teams, which is about 1000 engineers using the platform. These teams are all, use, all using a wide variety of different technologies. So our goal is to provide a consistent interface for everyone. And we largely do this by leveraging Kubernetes and building custom tooling and libraries, which teams can leverage. From the technical stats point of view, we have over 300 unique applications deployed to the platform with more than 60,000 replicas across all the environments. And to support uh, the required scale, we have performance tested our central services such as Ingress to 1 million TPS. And that's enough from me as an introduction. Over to you, Anthony, to talk about why we chose Cilium and eBPF. Thanks. So why are we gonna use, um, why have we been using Cilium? So we've got a few security requirements. So we want to restrict like the communication within the cluster. So from pod to pod communication, uh, we make sure we can allow a specific uh, tenant to talk to a specific databases uh, or block them. And uh, we want to make sure we can um, block some malicious IP defined by the security team and making sure so the tenant cannot override the blocked IP at the cluster level. And we want to move to, to, towards a least privilege access model. So how we can do that? So you've got like the IP tables uh, way where it's, we, we know there is like a, uh, some downside in terms of scalability concern. Uh, there is a, a, few, a few talks on the web already talking about that. Uh, but now we're going to rely on, on eBPF and Cilium, and that's why we have been choosing eBPF to make sure we can scale uh, for, for the current uh, cluster figures and, and number. Uh, so we're going to rely on the eBPF e -po, uh, programmability, where you can inject some eBPF program inside the kernel and interact with the network stack, and rely on eBPF map to share the data. Cilium agent is going to update the data, and is going to give us a more efficient load balancing and network policies propagation. I'm going to rely heavily on deny uh, rules to, to block uh, any, any, any malicious IP, for example, and host networking. And with a low overhead of IBPF, we have the nice observability tools like Hubble and Cilium Monitor. So when you decide to embrace new technologies and at some point you have some um, live and existing cluster and you, you want to make sure 
uh, you're gonna you're gonna mitigate the risk uh, by adopting a new technology. So you you we are gonna rely heavily on testing to make sure we are not affecting any tenant and, and the platform overall. So you have a pipeline, you have a Git repository, you 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 commit your change and and you're gonna push and as part of the build phases on on the CI we've got a, a CI agent which gonna run the test and that's all the localized tests you can you can imagine uh, like linting uh, diggers to just check uh, the overall uh, inspect uh, docker images and you can run some vulnerability scanning and when everything is green you can publish the artifact with a single version which gonna version the docker images but also uh, all the uh, config map and artifact inside the repository and push to the deep uh, test repository. So this test repository, when everything is green, is going to just uh, be, this artifact is going to be used on the non-functional testing and functional testing. Um, So as part of the test, uh, we're going to use uh, so the, um, the artifact uh, available on test. So we have two phases which are running in parallel, so the functional testing and non-functional testing. So functional testing, so what, what we are doing is uh, rely relying heavily on Cilium connectivity test. So we deploy essentially the uh, test suite uh, provided by Cilium, a Cilium project, and then we it's essentially some, some pod talking between each other, and we check like the TNS connectivity, HTTP connectivity, and the right behavior of the CM network policies on an existing cluster. And we have our custom additional functional tests, uh, including like making sure namespace network policies can also override the cluster wide deny policies. Uh, we want to restrict the number of uh, um, identities based on specific labels. So we only allow a specific label uh, defined on the namespaces. And then we make sure like the tenant cannot create too many identities because it, it, we are not checking the label on the pod. So when we have a nice number or we have the expected uh, Cilium identity, which is going to be matching the number of namespaces on the cluster. So we know exactly how many identities we we need to target for to be live and making sure there is no issues. Uh, and we want to make sure when we apply some network policies and uh, it's gonna obviously uh, stop the existing TCP connection. So that's one of the tests. And then we've got another test, which is a non-functional testing. And we are trying to have like very short feedback. So it's you need to run under 30 minutes. And what we want to do, so both of them are fully automated, the functional test and, and non-functional test. Um, and we want to exercise a full network flow to make sure we reproduce what uh, the tenant are using. So we are going to run some load injector, going to uh, so targeting a, a, a backend services, and it's going to go through different network paths, internal ingress, external ingresses, and service IP or Kubernetes service. And as part of this uh, path, we're going to use the HTTP and gRPC to rely on the underlying TCP layer to talk to the backend. And obviously, it's gonna, uh, the, the load injector is going to resolve Kubernetes domain and through the service IP and core DNS, and which exercise also the EDP path. Um, during while we are running this uh, load, load inj uh, injection, we are going to include some resilient testing and, and, and chaos scenarios. So we're going to delete the Cilium agent. ETCD member and and the Cilium operator and the backend and it's really important to to delete the backend uh, to make sure we recycle and we exercise the rolling deployment of, of a dev application which gonna force the load injector to re-establish connection and exercise a load balancing feature of, of, of Cilium. So we are trying to simulate with like the worst case scenario so we uh, target the number of identities for example and and uh, available on, on the, the biggest cluster and just uh, uh, trying to double it uh, to make sure we can we can be uh, safe for, for the next year or, or two. Um, that's very important when we are trying to, to test it to have the existing architecture. Like for example, we've got CM17 and when we, we want to migrate to 1.9, so we're going to have the existing infrastructure run the, the load injection and then we can deploy 1.9 and making sure like there is no disruption. So we've got a dedicated test for that, for the migration. And obviously it's hard to catch every single uh, network path and, and behavior. So we are listening to 
And uh, whenever whenever a tenant is reporting an issue, we're just trying to investigate and trying to reproduce it on our test and adding and relying on regression testing to make sure it's, it's never going to happen again. So as part of those non-functional testing, we've got four tests. Uh, the first one is uh, identity churn. So we are trying to simulate the identity churn. So we create uh, 5,000 identities and we delete some of them. And then we exercise a Cilium operator garbage collection. And ob obviously when you create new identities because we rely heavily on the cluster entities, the, the identities are gonna inject it inside the BPF map. So we know uh, that there's gonna be the worst case scenario. Uh, for the first test, we Obviously, we do the chaos testing, as I said. So we delete all the Cilium operator, etcd member, and backend, and also the Cilium agent. And for now, on our specific environment and on our use cases with the config, we we can see a smaller amount of drop uh, when you, only when you restart Cilium agent, and we are investigating why. So we've got a specific uh, and dedicated for that, and we tolerate a few amount of drop, but those drop are just part of the metrics. But it's, we are not seeing it from our it's not generating any error from the client side or the injector side because of the tcp we try so we've got the second test which is exactly the same but we we do not restart the agent and we tolerate zero drop um the third test is with the identity churn and we are recreating the CM network policies with entity cluster entity which means it's going to uh, flush when you delete a Cilium network policy, flush the bpf map and it's going to be empty and when you recreate it's going to add all the identities available in the cluster inside the BPF map. And the last one is exactly the same, but we don't do identity churn, which means we can isolate uh, which test is gonna be if it's uh, affecting, if it's failing due to the identity churn or if it's a CDM network PC recreation. So to give you a bit more insight, so we've got the test, which is running automated. You've got, we rely heavily on the metrics and alert to block uh, and, and, and act as a failure test if there is an, uh, any alert. So you can see if at, the, at the very top left, you've got the creations rate. So we create some new pod on the new namespaces, which is gonna generate and match uh, the identity number. So at peak, we have like 10, 10 pod uh, created. And then you can see we've got like 15, 1500 pod running on the cluster, which is matching the number of identity even delta, which which is uh, changing due to because we are deleting also at the same time some pods. So you've got the GC uh, exercise. Uh, you can see all the BPF map operation, and you can understand what's going on uh, with and what uh, Cilium is doing uh, and updating the BPF map. You can see the Cilium drop and any alert, but that's a happy pass, so there is no alert. And you can see the four tests with a load ejection with 2000 TPS uh, in the middle of the screen. And that's allowing with the worst case scenario to uh, making sure we have like the right CPU and memory and defining the CPU and memory uh, for the demand set before deploying to, to the production environment. And the last bit is we are checking heavily on, on the load injector uh, latency, so the 99 percentile to make sure we don't have any increase in terms of latency and the network bus is not affected and we have uh, the right response time. So when both tests are green, uh, that means you've got the second quality gate uh, and then we are happy to deploy automatically to the extended test. So when it's available on the Docker registry with extended test, um, Every single day at 6 p.m., we the, the extended non-functional testing is going to happen, and it can run up to 16 hours. But for the Cilium case, we are happy with between six and eight hours. That's giving a, a good amount of time to to load tests and soak tests. Uh, the behavior of Cilium and making sure there is no memory leak, for example, and we are heavily uh, testing like exactly the same non-functional testing as I've been explaining, the 30 minute one, but for a longer period of time. And we push to, to the different organizations, so Sky and NBCU for Peacock TV and, and, and the Europe Sky uh, Now TV and, and SkyGo. Uh, and we are pushing to pre-dev. So pre-dev, so we've got multiple environments at Sky, we've got pre-dev, dev, stage, and prod. So pre-dev is so all of them are tenant facing except pre-dev. So they're not gonna, the tenants are not gonna deploy on it, but only the infrastructure people are gonna deploy some application on top of it. And we monitor every single 
environment by running continuous load, which is essentially some load injector, which are running continuously uh, load through the internal ingresses, external ingresses, and the Kubernetes services. Uh, and with all those metrics, we can uh, gauge the promotion with alerting on latency increase, HTTP error, and packet drop. And at every single day at 8.30, we're going to try to check if there is any alert on the previous environment and promote to the next one. So N, N plus, uh, N plus one, N, N, N plus two, and et cetera. Uh, because we have multiple region and multiple uh, cluster, we can stagger the environment and deploy at the beginning at 10 a.m. to the first region and two hours later on the region two and so on. So thank you. It was a brief overview of what we have been able to do at uh, and deploying at, uh, at Sky, uh, Cilium. Thank you, Anthony. And before we jump into questions, I'm going to be cheeky and mention that we are hiring engineers. So if you're interested in finding out more, feel free to get in contact. And with that, we'll open floor to the questions.